Good morning. Uh, pretty packed morning already. So uh, I'm going to take you to almost lunchtime. Uh, in my career, I've had a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, speak about technology. Um, but today, today is a different day. I'm actually here to talk about humanity. I'm here to talk about what it is that technology can do in order to uh, help us achieve our full potential as a human race. So I bring a very simple message. And uh, the message is uh, that on the screen. Uh, those who make digit digitalization more human are the ones that will actually win and thrive. That is, focus on the interface between technology and humans in order to achieve better performance. Now, I'm an engineer, so I like to structure when I have a point of view in uh, a logical sequence. So I'm going to walk you through what do I mean by that. I'm going to tell you why I believe it matters. And then I'm going to give you a couple of hints on how do you actually do it. Um, first, what do I mean by humanity and interfacing with technology? And for context, I'm going to take a quick history on our, our humanity. You see, as humans, uh, we have uh, related to tools in a you know, pretty simple way. Typically, we have used tools to help us um, achieve something. It's a fairly rational interface between humanity and tools. And uh, there is a very powerful uh, element of our uh, evolution that uh, uh, created a very strong bond that made us, actually, uh, the species that we are, which we call empathy. And that interaction between humans is actually uh, very strong. So the rational side is weaker. The emotional side is very strong. So you see, in the, in the history of all of these interfaces, from the man basically just having a lever to improve the uh, physical connection to everything around them, um, those interfaces have been very limited. I mean, think about it. A keyboard, a mouse, a screen. For the most part, it is a rational interface. It is unlike what we have between uh, us and other, other tools. Um, one could say, as technology has got better, we have actually developed some emotional connection to some of that technology. Or at least many of my friends tell me that about me and my cars. So there is a little bit of emotional connection there. But it's pretty much one way. I, I fall in love with the car, but the car doesn't really understand me. So the opportunity is, well, could we actually create a bond between us or our tools that would be as strong as the empathy that we actually use between people? So that is what I mean, what our opportunity is. So for the first time, we have the convergence of multiple elements. From one side, artificial intelligence is technology that can actually understand what we do. Cognitive science, which is our own understanding on those interfaces and how our behavior works. And design as the art in which you transform the engineering and the architecture of those choices into something that connects deeply into that empathy interface. So that is what I mean. Why is it relevant? See, most of us, in any given day, we would be asked, do you think you make good decisions? Do you think you're rational? And most of us would say, yeah, of course. I, I really study things before I make a decision. And uh, I'm very thoughtful in the way that I pick things out. That is what we think. The reality is quite different. The reality is most of us will make decisions not based on underlying facts, but actually based on how those facts are presented to us. Let me give you some examples. On the decision on how much money will you save for your retirement, there were studies done that said the moment that 
the choice from opting in. So you have to take an action to actually save money. We changed to an opting out, which is you have to take an action not to save money. The pace of savings in the United States in that study went from 42% to 91%. You see, there is no underlying change. Nothing else changed. The only change is, do you need to do something to save? Or do you need to something to not save? $30 billion of decisions were swayed just by how the data was presented to us. As a matter of fact, uh, there are professors there that take it to the extreme that say up to 95% of all of our purchase decisions, even when we think they're rational, the rational part is only there to confirm the emotional choice we have already made. So up to 95% of behaviors, actions, are more dependent on that strong empathy interface, on the emotional side of our humanity and our brains, than the rational data around that. Not convinced yet? Okay, let me do a very, very simple experiment. What I have there for you to see is uh, a very simple figure. And I have marked two squares on that picture, square A and a square B. If you're like most people, and again, this is a very simple question. When I ask most people, it's like, tell me which square is darker. Everybody tells me, well, I see A darker than B, so if you're asking me, it must be B. And then I say, no, it's not B. So I repeat again, which square is darker? So how many of you would say that square A is darker than square B? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Well, Shafi know the answer, so he's not raising his hand, but pretty much everybody else in this, in this uh, auditorium is raising it. About typically 85% of the people will raise their hands. Let me do this now. Let me keep those squares the same, but eliminate the context that I added to that picture. Which square is darker, A or B? And the answer is they're identical. They're exactly identical. But even if you're staring at that picture and you have them side by side, your brain can't let you believe that the square B in one side and the square B in the other is the same. They must be doctored because your brain is telling you by the additional context, B is clearly lighter than A, A is clearly darker than B. If I would frame a decision for you to make and I would add that context, you would not make the decision based on the fact that pixel by pixel, A and B are identical in color and in shape, but by the actual context that I added to shape your decision. So remember, we make decisions more on how things are presented to us than the underlying facts. And yet, as technologists, we are spending a lot of our time creating unbelievable precise algorithms to, get, to give us precise answers, but yet we're gonna behave and act based on how data is presented to us. So let me bring us back to the same point again. When you take artificial intelligence and you create systems that interact with us humans, when you optimize those interfaces for emotion and for human condition, that is the biggest lever on changing performance of humans and society in, in general. Uh, and it's a lever bigger, I would say, than any other technology advancement in the history of our race. In the same way that empathy was the biggest invention to actually boost our survival rate as a species. So, if you understood the what, and hopefully you're persuaded by the why, the next answer is, so how do you do it? Don't have a comprehensive uh, list, but I have a few tips that may be helpful. So it comes down to take what we know of human uh, cognition, what we know on how we actually make decisions, 
and translate those patterns in how do you connect technology to technology and even people to people. First principle that I now use, and many really, really good designers, uh, especially web designers and mobile app designers, do it intuitively without knowing they're using this principle. Uh, is what I call the principle of the least effort. In physics, you know, there is the principle of least energy. Uh, in human cognition, there is the principle of least effort. And my interpretation of it, it goes like this, is most people will do what's easy more often than they will do what's right. So think about that. People will do what's easy more often than they will do what's right. And trillion dollar companies have been formed on that principle with the single idea of, well, maybe then we should have a one click buy button because it is the least amount of effort. So the guideline of those interfaces is if you actually want people to do what's right, make what's right easy. Think about it works in policy, it works in corporate processes, it works in engineering, and it works in the way that you design a website, an application, or interface technology with humans. Ask yourself, every time you add a click, every time you have an action that takes energy, the likelihood of that happening will reduce. Second thing is uh, understanding how humans are wired. We were not wired, our brain was not wired to actually remember very long, meaningless numbers. As a matter of fact, it's actually very easy to test how limited the computational power of the brain is. The brain is a fantastic machine of pattern recognition. It's a really poor machine of uh, number crunching. And I can test it right now. So uh, help me with this. Two plus two is what? Four, right? Two plus two? Four. Can you say four? Two plus two? Four. Four plus four? Eight. Eight plus eight? Sixteen. Okay, sixteen times two seventy-two. We're, we're only multiplying, it's not even complicated, right? Very limited. I can tell you, remember three numbers, 282. Can you remember those three numbers? 282, right? If I give you seven numbers, 282731547, can you repeat them? No. So when you're creating an interface between technology and a person, there is something that if you tell that person to remember four digits, they probably can do it on their short-term memory and just apply it, and it will be a good experience. If you tell them to remember seven, eight, 20 digits, now you're forcing that person to spend more energy to have to write it down and then come back to the interface. So when you interface technology with humans, make sure that you realize that we were not designed to retain a lot of numbers. The other things that we do is uh, we're extremely adaptive. We are constantly, constantly rebaselining our experience. So I remember the first time that I was giving a set of numbers to do a, a, a conference call. Everybody here has done a conference call, right? So you dial a number and you have your own code, you memorize that code and then everybody comes in and everybody speaks, right? Conference calling, very usual. And then one day in my mobile device, somebody told me if you type those numbers all together, then you can have a one click dial. So you one click and you're in the conference call. How many of you having a phone have actually done one click and join a conference call? Just raise your hands. Okay, about half of the audience or a URL. Now what happened that same day is when somebody else sends you an email with a list of numbers that you actually now have to dial to enter on a, on a conference call, what happens? Is you're really mad because you actually want that one click button. You just re-baseline the entire experience and now something that was perfectly fine now is really a bad experience. Not because the experience changed, but just because somebody gave you a better experience. Um, and then it's the 
favorite topic that we talk a lot about. Humans have a lot of biases, a lot of biases. So um, make sure that you use them as features as you actually uh, design those interfaces, almost like a way to reverse engineer how do you expect the person to uh, uh, act and then use those as features in that, in that interface. Um, I think my time is up. So uh, the last thing that I would give you with is we actually now understand better how technology can mimic the way that humans form relationships with either, you know, other beings, animals, or with ourselves. So technology that actually understands the architecture of relationships and use it effectively without encroaching in the creepiness factor uh, will be superiorly adaptive compared to any other technology. Um, as I said, I'm going to finish as we started. Um, it is a lot more that we can do to get technology connected with humanity in a way that massively enhances performance well beyond the accuracy or, or power of all of those algorithms. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great webinar.